Okay, we, ha we have uh, Hugo here. Hugo is a walk and train session. He has uh, dog reactivity, lead reactivity with other dogs, and he's an extreme puller. You can see Hugo's a strong looking dog, strong staffy. Now, he's on his device here that the owners have him on, which is a, a different style of a harness that I have uh, never seen. I'm not a fan of harnesses, I don't use them. Um, but this one here is got a handle at the top, and this one here is sort of tries to guide the dog and pull him backwards. I suppose similar to a halty. It's a bit of a contraption. I feel like I'm sort of driving something here. I don't know. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the session on the harness. I'm gonna see how good he can walk for me. And then what we will aim to to uh, we can work between is we've got our gentle leader and we have our slip lead. So I'm gonna see how we go, start him off, doing a little, just a bit of awareness work on the harness and then we'll go from there. So we'll see who's walking who. And right now, I don't feel like I'm in much control. So Hugo is sort of walking me, I think. We'll come up the top here, it's a bit wet down the bottom. So now I can see why the owners have me to try and help them out with this little, little issue um, of Hugo and his walking. So let's see if I can get some attention with Hugo. Now I'm not going to go to a food. I will use food as a reward for when he offers me a good action, but I'm not going to use food as a way to get the action, if that makes sense, and bribe him because it will fail me out in this real world. But if he does choose to perform well and not react to a dog, I'm certainly going to reward it with food. But it's not a tool I'm going to teach him with. I'm going to have to be, you know, reasonably firm with Hugo and teach him that he's got to be aware of me. You can see right now, he has no awareness of me as a handler. Even though I'm new to him, this is how he walks for his owners. So let's see if I can get some attention with, this is quite a contraption, the method that I normally use, which is basically a lot of direction changing, trying to work to a loose lead. So no commands, we're just going to walk off. Well, we're going to get this way. So try and drive him back here. And see if I can get him walking a bit better for me. Turn him round. Okay. <laughs> this thing is... Uh, So, getting a little bit of attention here. Remember, this is with no distractions though. So, we're going to see how we go with in this area first. All I'm doing here now is working to try and get a bit of a loose lead. Just teach Hugo who's in control. So, that is a bit better. That being said, there's no distractions around here. A little bit of a direction change. Okay. Now, some of you will be watching this and go, oh, he's going to be great. He's going to be perfect. That's not going to happen. When this guy sees another dog, we're not gonna have this. I guarantee you. It got some control in that area, absolutely. But I'm still a believer in a gentle leader or a slip lead. So what I'm gonna go here is now, is I'm going to go, let's go slip lead first. Then the reason I like the slip lead is that if it gives me better control through the top area of his body, now Hugo being so strong through the chest, he can develop all his power through here. But my slip lead, I can design it that it doesn't, it's still loose, fingers are in there, but it gives me better control up higher on his neck without hurting the dog, but enabling me to not pull so much body weight around. So, I won't take the harness off yet. I'll leave the harness on like so. And now we're on the slip lead. So. Let's bring Hugo here now. Hugo, sit. Nice and high. This is a problem when people have a lead and it slips around the chest too much. You don't have that same control. Hugo's a very strong dog who so want to be able to maintain control of him. It's nice and loose there, fingers under, there's no pulling on the neck. I'm always telling you guys, I'm aiming to have a loose lead. So his reward, when he's in the right spot, the lead will be loose. Let's see how we go with this slip we're walking on. Again, no commands, same principle. Let's go. So 
We're just trying to get better awareness there. Hugo paying attention to me. Little direction change, little pop of the lead. Very small. That's all we do, small. We don't keep the pressure on, pull across, loose lead. This is where we want the dog. Loose lead, good boy. Good boy. Yes, good. Hugo avoided the lead pull then. He followed me, there was no correction. You do that right and the dog will very quickly figure out. And the reason I'm not talking to him much here is I want him looking at me. If I'm always cueing him verbally, he's gonna wait, good boy. He's gonna wait for those verbal cues. I wanna do more, yes, good boy. I'm gonna reward that behavior, beautiful. So we've got nice control here on a slip lead. Much better than that harness. See here, this is a dog walking where I walk. Good boy, good boy. Yes, good boy, Hugo. Hugo, I'm sure likes his food. Ah, not even food driven here, that's fine. Even better. So, again, pressure on, pressure off. Hugo. Great control. Again, this is not real world yet. We haven't come across another dog, but I'm just going through this process of elimination and finding out what I think I've got best control with. I'm gonna put the whole tea on him in a controlled environment. He has had this on before. Sit. And we'll see, we'll see which one we work between. It's a matter of finding what equipment works for your dog. Every dog is different. Some work good on a halty, some work good on a slip lead, and vice versa. Where people go particularly wrong with gentle leaders is they keep the pressure on, that creates that pull from the dog. We want to teach the dog loose lead is in a good spot. Hugo, let's go, buddy. So I'm going to go a little bit of pressure and then pressure off. Nope. Fair, nope, leave it. Very small movements. Nope. Quick, let's go, bud. Up here, quick. Normal reaction for a hold. Good boy. I just gotta slip this around his face a bit better. He's got it on the other side of his body. There we go, okay. Good boy, let's go. Come on, quick, 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 quick. See, I'm trying to, no, no, no. No, no, uh, uh. Let's go, Hugo. When your dog does this, come, 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 come. Good boy, come, come. No, no, no. You've gotta work hard. Come, Hugo, let's go. This is the process you gotta go through with the gentle leaders, unfortunately. The dog's rubbing their face on the ground. They don't like it. It's not hurting them, but they don't like it. The quicker he realizes, good boy! Quicker he realizes, pressure off. See that there? Nope, pressure off, all day. There's a lot of working back and forth. You feel like a bit of a conductor in an orchestra. But, come, if I keep the pressure on, he's always gonna keep fighting. See this? Loose lead. Good boy, come on, come buddy, good boy. Yes, 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 good boy. Come on, quick, 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 quick. Good boy. Another minute or so. Just get, yeah, good boy. There we go. Yes, quick, quick, quick. Look, pressure off. Don't keep the pressure on. Just enough to, ah, no, and off again. I'm using two fingers. Very subtle. Couple more turns, good boy. Come on, buddy. Good boy, yeah. That's the way you go. Nice, Hugo. Quick, let's go, good boy. Okay, Hugo, sit. So, I think Hugo's at a good enough standard now that we can go for a walk. We're definitely not gonna go back to the harness. We're gonna work between the gentle leader and the slip lead. The next step is we need to come across a dog and I wanna see what gives me the best control with Hugo. So we're gonna have a walk down here, purposely find a dog, I ask the owners what they did when they see a dog, they turn the other way. We don't want to have to do that in the real world. We want to go for our walks, but we need to find a threshold at the start. Threshold means how close can I get to another dog without Hugo reacting? 100 meters isn't realistic. We want to get close to other dogs. He may never socialize and play with dogs. Hugo's got a bit of a, a bad history, being treated badly. So he may never get to that, but the owners would be happy if they can just walk down 
a break wall or a beach or somewhere with him on lead and not be reactive. That would be a nice goal. He may want to react, but if we can just get him not reacting and learning manners and walking well, we're doing well. So uh, we'll go on our walk. Okay, so remember your goal is to work that lead and get it loose. Now, let's start adding our basics in. When Hugo wants to go one direction, hey, I'm gonna stop and give a correction. But as soon as I do the correction, the lead goes loose again. Good boy. Hey. Very little in the way of commands. Here you go. Good boy. Now you may not get far on your first walk. You gotta stop correcting. But that's the process you have to go through. Hey. Okay, I'm actually gonna switch. I'm gonna switch to the slip lead. It's a matter of finding what works for your dog, guys. What we need is the lead. Sit high here. And we need our stopper set in so it's got a bit of movement, but it can't slip down onto his chest. Out there. So it's got room, it's got room to go loose, but it can't slip down too much. Now we go to the same process. We walk and we give corrections. Hey, he's a strong dog. He's gonna take a few corrections to teach him. Here you go. That he can't just wander off the path. Good boy. Nope, and then pressure off. Good boy, that's better. Yes, ah. so there's gonna be a lot of leave it commands. We may not even get very far today. You can see here how highly strung he is, energy looking for things, clearly probably looking for a dog. Now we're gonna get a lot different response when we see a dog. Are we gonna to have to be reasonably firm on Hugo? We are, food doesn't cut it, he's no interest in food. So it's gonna take a lot of direction changes and a lot of stops. Trying to keep the pressure off the lead. Hugo. Good boy, gotta teach him. If he doesn't pay attention, that's when he gets the correction. Good boy, there we go, better. Like I said, it's a bit like conducting an orchestra. There's a lot of pressure on, pressure off, a lot of movement, but this is the process we need to go through. If he goes to up front, every now and again, I'm gonna stop. Give him a little correction, good boy. He's never had this in his life. Good boy, there we go. Now, I'm very aware, when I see a dog, we're gonna have a very different story with this, this young man. But for now, even if we don't confront too many dogs, but we just get him walking better, that would be a good first step. Just not pulling on the lead, like so. Loose lead. If you notice, I'm not cueing him very much. I'm not giving him any commands. I'll do some about turns. Hey. Hugo. Hey. Nope. Pressure off. You can see how strong this dog is. It doesn't even bother him at all. But that's better. Good boy. But it's what he needs. This is only his first lesson. First 15 minutes of his lesson. Good boy. Every now and again we stop and do some check-ins. Hugo. Sit. How many times do we ask him? We ask him once. Good boy. Couple of stops. Let's go. Pressure off. Good boy, Hugo. Good boy. Nice. Ah, ah, ah. We don't want to overpraise. Just enough praise. Let him know he's doing good. This is where I want him. Good. Try slowing your pace down. Make him have to consciously. Ah, ah. So as soon as he sees something, I can tell he's looking for a dog. We might end up back on the halty, we'll see how we go. But I can already tell how reactive he's going to be. So there's a dog coming here. So I want to see, this is learning. I can see him setting himself up. Hugo, leave it. No. Leave it. Leave it. No. So nice and high, leave it. Leave it, no, but 
You go leave it. Good boy. Good boy. Loose lead. Lead's loose. I'm not holding him there. Good boy. Okay. I know that was a lot of work, but that was actually a lot less than I thought. I had to keep very close to the dog, keep hands on him, but that's the process we're going to work through. And eventually, we don't have to be as hands on. That only took actually a couple of corrections, and I wasn't physically holding him there. So it was a lot better than I thought. No food rewards, just teaching this dog what we accept and what we don't accept. Okay, something I'm always telling people too is about being proactive with your dog. Not waiting till the dog gets out of control, knowing that you look up ahead, you're scanning as the owner, I see a dog. I'd be sensible about it. Hugo's learning. Is he ready to be two foot in front of a dog? No, you saw there, way less reactive than I thought he'd be because I was hands on, but he was sitting in the end. There's a dog coming here. So we're introducing Hugo to the leave it command. I know he can see that dog. So I need to give him a couple of proactive leave it's, let him know I'm not gonna tolerate him pulling. I'm not worried at this stage if he's walking right by my side. If I can get him walking past this dog and not being extreme towards it, we'll see how we go. So the dog's walking now. Hugo, leave it. Leave it. Hey, leave it. No, leave it. So there's another dog up there. If Sarah films this dog up in front, good boy. Uh -uh. Good boy. But loose lead, good boy. There's no pulling, there's a lot of voice. Pressure on, pressure off. Hey, you go, ah, uh -uh. nope. You'll get a drink up here, buddy. Very highly strung dog. More about, I think there's also a lot of play in this dog. The lack of socializing, wanting to play. Good boy. That's actually pretty good. This is a very active area, very busy. And with the amount of energy has, this guy has in him, I give him 10 points at this stage. Good boy. Hey. It's going to be a working process. He's got to learn. He can't just walk off when he wants. Loose lead. Good boy. There we go. Good boy. I'll work up towards this drink here. And then I'm actually going to switch back to a halty. Just work in between different equipment and see what works best. We've got another dog coming up here, so I'm not going to try him. So I see he sees it. Leave it. You can see him already being apprehensive as in responding to the training. This here, he wants to go, but I'm not holding him back. This is him making a choice already, okay? But again, we don't be silly about it. We keep him at a distance. Leave it, leave it. Just find that threshold. No, leave it. And if you need to, sit, stay. Sit, no, stay. That's a staffy being a staffy, stay. Huh? No, he's not wanting to say hello. Stay. Stay. Good boy, stay. So I'm always looking for this reward. As much as I'm on him, I'm still trying not to hold him. I'm trying to get Hugo to make the choice. If I force and hold him back, he's instantly going to pull against me. Good boy. Let's go. Good boy. There we go. Want a drink, buddy? Hey. What's the play with him in his mouth, does he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She said, oh, I think he wants to say hello. I said, he doesn't want to say hello. Different sort of hello. <laughs> Good boy. Okay. Okay, we've gone back to the uh, gentle leader with Hugo. I think overall, it's going to be better for control, as in you do not have to be as physically strong. The slip leader is a great tool, but it takes more skill to use. And for someone who's not very strong, I was just talking to Sarah, who's behind the camera there. As a girl, she would feel more confident um, handling him on the halty, which I tend to agree, but it's nice to go between two. So we've got a dog up here at about 200 meters away. We'll walk that way. So we'll start him on the halty here. And it's a matter of what works best. But the main reason the owners are giving up on the halty typically is because the dog rolls around on the ground. And you'll find if you keep your dog on the concrete with a halty, he'll do it a lot less because they don't want to roll their race on concrete. So we've got a dog come up here and we'll see how he goes. On our left here, we're gonna give, once Hugo sees it, I'm not gonna reprimand him for something he hasn't seen. So I wanna know that he's seen the dog. There it is there. No, nope, leave it. Leave it, sit, stay. Leave it. Good boy, stay. Leave it. 
Now you couldn't get a better response. Quick correction, pressure off. Very proud of you, Hugo. We don't overpraise, there's no pressure on that lead. Beautiful response with the halty, like I thought. They're a bit more direct. They give that turn back on the chin. Hugo's a beautiful dog. He's a rescue and he got mistreated early on, very badly. So the new owners are doing their best to get this dog nice and confident. A lot of things you see with dogs come from lack of confidence, lack of socializing and fear-based, yeah? So you've got to remember that. It's not all outright aggression. And we've got another dog here. Hugo, look, leave it. I make him see it, leave it. I'm not even going to make him sit. Loose lead. Hugo sat by choice. Good boy. Good boy. And I'm going to reward that behavior. Let him know he's a good dog when he doesn't react. This is what we want out of this dog. He made his own choice then. I gave a small correction and Hugo realized that it is not worth the fight. Your reprimand has to outweigh, or your correction, whatever you want to call it, in there, the same thing. Or if you want to call it positive punishment, which is the new age way to say things, you are giving a punishment to the dog. The positive punishment, that means you're giving it. Or reprimand or correction. Point of the story is, that outweighed the desire to go for that dog. If your correction doesn't outweigh that, you're not gonna fix these problems. I'm telling you guys all the time. There's a lot of people out there that one biggest problem they have, they are too soft. They're too concerned not to correct their dog. Hugo's not running in fear. He's a dog, he doesn't take it how we take it, like I've always said to you guys. He understands it. Dogs understand rules and they follow them. They don't have a problem with them, but you have to do the right job in correcting them. And that was an amazing response. That was two dogs without any pulley, little correction. Hugo's still sitting, hasn't been told to sit, hasn't been told to stay. He just made a choice to be a good dog. Very good, buddy. Good boy. So this session is not just about dog reactivity, it's about him walking on lead. Now to remind you guys, when I do the turn, it's a little pull, a little pop, and then pressure off. When you turn, pop across, hands off the lead. Make your dog make a choice to walk with you. I'm not dragging him. I want him to decide it's better to be here. He's doing his own thing. When I stop, Hugo stops. When I walk, Hugo walks. Little correction, nothing, okay? With the halty, remember to correct your dog for it. When he does on the ground like that, pressure, pressure off. Turn, come buddy, good boy. Let's go bud, let's go. Good boy, Hugo. Good boy, look at you on the loose lead. Good boy. Good boy, come on. So after seeing what we're seeing today, I have no doubt at all, once the owners know how to handle this dog, Hugo, sit. You're gonna have a dog that doesn't react to other dogs. Will he want to react? Probably. Seeing what I've seen as well, after training many, many dogs, I don't think it's aggression, outright aggression. I think it's anxiety, not getting to the dog, lack of socializing. The step I would take this dog towards is muzzled to a dog park, being around the dog. So he can't physically hurt the dogs, but we'll never know if they never actually get to meet them. We'll always be wondering, because you can misread it. You can read it, misread it both ways. You can see a dog being really, really aggressive and think it's gonna kill another dog and then get to the dog and do nothing. And then you can see a dog do nothing, be very sneaky, be quiet, get close to a dog and then bite. We've all seen that. So it goes both ways. So in the end, the only way you'll actually find out is getting a muzzle on your dog and getting him with other dogs. That is a step we need to take after a couple of sessions. But super proud of young Hugo, he went good. Now I think the uh, harness should be thrown in the bin and Hugo should be put on a gentle leader. He might have the odd roll around, but he'll deal with it and we're gonna get better control. Good boy, Hugo. He's a beautiful dog, beautiful. Good boy. Need another drink? Have a drink, buddy. No, let's go. Good boy. Remember when you're handling, it's about your body language too. Walk tall, be confident with your lead. Correction, pressure off. Hand in left hand, okay? Loose lead. Know how to handle your equipment. Hugo knows he's in the right spot. Remember what I said at the start? If I hold the lead tight now, he's gonna pull against it. His reward is this. Hugo's figured out very quickly with me, if I walk beside him, 
There's no pulling of the lead. So what I would uh, advise with Hugo at this stage is, he's still at the sit stay stage when a dog comes up. So I don't, I, well, you could walk past another dog at a decent threshold, but to get best control for Hugo at this stage, I would do a sit stay, let the other dog go by and then walk off. If you walk in a busy area, traffic out a lot of dogs, it's a lot of stop in the city. That's just life or you have to avoid it for now until he gets better. But he'll, he'll get better very, very quickly. It won't take long. It's just a matter of giving these small corrections and teaching him that this reactivity is not accepted. And it has to be that way. We can't have it, can't tolerate it. There's no amount of food that's gonna get him out of it. I just take him small corrections, but he's learning, he's walking on a lead, he's not rolling around on the halty. He's understanding that I've got to walk. And when he does behave and do the right thing, he gets to go for his walk. If he does the misbehaving and pulling, he's simply not going to get go on his walk. Make your dog earn their walk. So we've got a dog coming here, so let's do the sit stay. Like I just mentioned. Hugo's not at the walking pass stage yet. This will give me better control. So I'm working on loose lead. I've got the left hand here, right hand small correction. Leave it. No. Get him to make a choice. Leave it. Good boy. Leave it. No. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, Hugo. Let's go. And that was pretty good. That was a couple of very small corrections. Very small leave it's. Have the hand there. That's just safety at this stage. Hugo's learning. You don't want to get too complacent to think your dog's fixed early. Be sensible with your training. Especially when you're dealing with dog reactivity. The last thing you want is a dog attack. So we need to be really sensible so you can control the situation and win. I'm gonna let him go here. Let him have a pee and do his thing because he's done great, whatever he wants to do. And uh, yeah, be in the position to win and control the situation. Set yourself up for success, not failure. So that's Hugo's first walk and train. And you'll see his journey as he goes and progresses. We're aiming to get him closer to dogs, hopefully to the dog park and uh, coming face to face with dogs. But this is the first one and we'll see how we go from here. Good boy, Hugo. You did very good. Good boy.